How many of you saw the movie The Sixth Sense? It was a breakout film for the child actor, Haley Joel Osment, and a breakout for the writer, uh, M. Night Shyamalan. It had a, uh, what I call a grab you by the neck and shake your world ending. Uh, It was a good movie. It's a twist at the end. Now, the film explored the idea of a sixth sense that goes beyond our natural five senses of taste, touch, smell, hearing, and seeing. As human beings, we have been groomed to live by those five senses. Of course, the fact of the matter is that we need them in order to survive. They're very much a part of our survival kit. Now, last week, I talked to you about how these five senses inform your life. I also introduced you to the idea that once you have been born again, there's another aspect of your being that you should begin to allow to direct you. If you remember that, the body, the soul, and the spirit. God created Man, that was the dust of the earth, breathed into him the spirit, and then man became a living soul. And what I shared with you is that the body or the flesh has informed the soul, which is our expression, and I don't know why you went backwards, I didn't ask you to. Let's try again. It informed the soul or the expression of your personality. And once you're born again, your spirit has become alive. But it has only a little influence. Something needs to influence technology here. The spirit only has a little influence over your personality, your soul, the way that you express yourself. And that's why the arrow that I drew there in the diagram is so thin compared to the one from the body. But it is a learning process. And that little thin arrow should eventually become as large as the other arrow while the other arrow becomes as small as the one of the Spirit. We are to become uh, led by the Spirit, as we'll see in a few moments. But that is your sixth sense, the realm of the spirit. Now, we don't get much training in how to use this sixth sense. It is sometimes referred to as intuition. But even then, we're told that not everyone has a good sense or intuition. So just to make sure that we're all on the same page, let's let's look at a definition of intuition. The ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning or a thing that one knows or considers likely from instinctive feeling rather than conscious reasoning, often referred to as a gut feeling. Another term that was used in times past is extrasensory perception or ESP. Now it gained notoriety during the rise of the New Age movement And it's basically the same as intuition. But the definition there is extrasensory perception, or ESP, also called sixth sense, includes claimed reception of information not gained through the recognized physical senses, but sensed with the mind. Now notice how the definition tries to belittle the idea with the phrase claimed reception of information. And to me, that's belittling the idea of this ESP, of intuition, or as we're going to say, being led by the Spirit. So when we're locked into our five senses, following a gut feeling can be rather challenging because we have no rationale for it. It doesn't fit with what we're seeing. You can't give a reason for what it is that you understand. It's just there. It's something that you know, but you can't explain. You can't explain how you know. 
So people will pass it off as just something you claim, but they don't believe it. And when you get challenged on it, it's easier just to back off. It's like, I don't know. I, maybe I'm wrong. And that's usually what we do. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Because we don't have any empirical evidence for what we're seeing, feeling. However, this realm of the Spirit is something that we are coming into in this time. We're going to see that more and more in the world. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, for us older folks, we get to see it, maybe even participate a little, depending on how open you are to change uh, the way you've always done things. But for younger people, like Elizabeth, there's a whole new world awaiting for those who will begin to function with this God-given ability. It's available for all of us, but some of us are stuck in our ways. It is an exciting time to be alive, though. The younger ones have the opportunity to see their spirit gain the ascendancy over their fleshly thinking, if I can put it that way. So I want to explore a little of what the Bible has to say about what the world calls extrasensory perception, ESP, intuition, or what we call being led by the Spirit, as in Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Now I've been sharing with you about the soon coming apocalypse or unveiling of the sons of God. We've been talking about that over the past few weeks. Now, one of the characteristics of a fully matured son or daughter of God is that he or she is led by the Spirit. Now, I don't want you to misunderstand me on that. I don't mean that only fully matured sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit. Being led by the Spirit is the necessary ingredient to grow into the maturity, into the full maturity. So it's there at the beginning. It's something you begin to experience right away. In fact, I think last week I said you grow, okay? We talked about you, you grow spiritually. So it's something you grow into. Now, Jesus told us something about this when he was preparing the disciples for his soon departure. In John chapter 16 and verse 13, we read, Jesus' words, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Now, it should be obvious from this that we are not guided into all the truth that there is in just one shot. It's not a one-off data dump. It's a journey It's a learning experience. The journey begins with two things, though, that we must be aware of. Two things that we need to be aware of in order to begin the spiritual journey into truth. One is that we need to know the truth of our existence, or as is being talked about a lot in um, the psychology realm and in um, Christian circles, is your identity, who you are, who you are in Christ. We need to know the truth of our existence. And the other is that we must put that knowledge into practice. Okay, now the scripture puts it this way. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 9, we read Paul saying, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. So regardless of what your senses tell you, regardless of what your experience may indicate, the truth of the matter is... You are in the Spirit. Now we need to let the reality of that truth sink into our consciousness. When we do, things will begin to change for us. Now that's the first thing for us to know, is that we are in the Spirit. Secondly, In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18, the first part says, 
in Paul's prayer, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. We need to have our understanding lifted above and beyond that which our five senses provide for us. That's what we've been dependent upon all our life, is only that realm of information. There's another realm. And we need to let go of the old in order to embrace the new. Paul calls it here the eyes of our understanding. Now, this is not something you can do. Okay? You cannot all of a sudden decide that you're going to begin to understand. It must come from God. That's why he prayed that way. But the first step, though, as I said, is for you to adopt the truth that you are no longer in the flesh, but in the spirit. That's got to become a part of your reality, part of your thinking, that you are a spiritual person. It doesn't matter whether you do spiritual things, whatever that is. You want to give me some clue as to what it means to do spiritual things? I don't know. It doesn't matter whether you do them or not. Do not, because, do not look on your outward experience. That's the whole thing. Don't look at your outward experience. That is the five senses still dictating what you should believe. It's confusing. It's difficult. It's a challenge. But the tr- this truth is stated differently, but with more clarity in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. We read there, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Have you ever been involved in a conversation about the things of the Lord with someone who doesn't know the Lord? Don't they reject just about every phrase that you try to offer? They can't understand it. It's not possible for them to understand. And it's not you. We, we come away thinking, well, I wish I could learn to say things better. Wouldn't matter how you say them. The natural person cannot. We go on in verse 15. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Positive statement. Paul's concluding statement is that we have the mind of Christ. Now, I know that it it would be possible in interpreting this verse as a statement that concerns only Paul. But I believe from the context, it applies to each of us. We each have the mind of Christ. Once again, though, I'm going to ask you the question, will you believe your five senses or will we believe the Scripture? If we believe our five senses, then we don't think we have the mind of Christ. Adopting this truth and making it a part of your reality, though, can shake up your world. It can begin to change all that you ever thought you knew. Now, that's part of the revelation of the gospel that Paul brought to us. We're going to look at a long passage now in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 13. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. He's saying it's not a natural wisdom. It's not even a wisdom that only the elite or the intelligentsia have. No, it goes beyond that. Verse 7, But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. It says here that it's a wisdom that has been kept secret until now. It is for our glory. That becomes important to understand in a little while as we go on in this. But for now, let's continue with verse 8. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Now that quote is from Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 4. And it essentially says that if you can dream it, if you can think it, if you can imagine it, if you can speak it, it's bigger than that. You can't comprehend in any fashion what God 
has prepared for those who love him. However, verse 10 says, These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. Again, we find here in another place, Paul makes the plain statement that we have the Spirit of God. He says the purpose of that is so that we may be able to understand the things that God has given us. And that's what I meant when I said it's not a one-off data dump. We are growing. It is a process. There are things that we have been given, but that we are only now beginning to see. There are things that we have been given that we are only now beginning to see that we don't have a clue how to understand it. But things are arising. Things are beginning. Things are churning. So let me continue. Verse 13. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. It is the Spirit of God who is bringing you into the full awareness of who you are and what you have inherited. We talked about that inheritance from Ephesians a couple of months ago. Now, the Lord may be using teachers such as myself to bring this to your attention, but it's the Holy Spirit that is guiding you into the truth that He is bringing forth in this hour. There are things coming into our understanding that have not been talked about before in the church or the churches or the places that you've been. New things are breaking upon the church we're, because we're learning to see by, by with, and in the Spirit. It's a totally different realm. But it's also a learning process. Now, all learning brings changes. You can't learn something new without it changing you. It, it adds to you at least. Even if only minuscule, there's a change. Something is added to you in some way, in some fashion, that changes things. It's a learning process. So God is revealing mysteries that have been hidden until now. He says, Paul writes, they, they were hidden from the ages. Ages a long period. A lot longer than we live. Some of these mysteries will shake up our orthodoxy when we begin to understand them. It's going to challenge what we've held. When that begins to happen, we will have a choice. We can step out of the security of the boat like Peter, or we can be like the rest of the disciples and cling to that which we know to be safe. Where are you going to find yourself? We are living in challenging times. And all the things that we see going on around us in our, with using our natural five senses. These are but indicators of something spiritual happening. There are things happening in the spirit that these things indicate. The chaos and confusion in the world surrounding COVID, the vaccine, the election, gender dysphoria, and all the other issues are simply the result of things being stirred up in the spiritual realm. Those are negatives. And if we live with our five senses, we're going to be drawn away by that rather than recognizing that there's something going on that we need to tap into, we need to be aware of. So where will you put your attention these days? You're going to put your attention on the natural or on the spirit? 
but you're going to let your spiritual life begin to rise to the ascendancy, and it's never too late. It may be challenging, but it's not too late. We can become the spiritual sons and daughters of God. It is available for each and every one of us. That's why the Lord's opening these things up. And as Paul prayed, I pray that the eyes of our understanding be opened, be enlightened, so that we can see also.